Alright, hello, this is Maglad, and this is the video version of my Photoshop coloring tutorial, where I'm going to teach you how to set up your documents and to color them in Photoshop. First thing you want to do is open your picture. I have my Maglad picture that I have here that's in ink. So what we're going to do first is separate the black lines from the white background. The reason you want to do this is so that you can paint beneath the ink and not disturb it at all. So, first thing you're going to have to do is go to the Channels tab, and you can click on it in your um, palette right here, or you can actually go to Window Channels, if it isn't uh, available on your screen. And you'll see four of them here. It's a combination of each available color that your monitor will display. And uh, what you're going to do is select only the blue channel, and then you're going to click on it and drag it straight down to this little page with a folded corner. That's the new channel icon. And you're going to release the mouse button. That makes, as you can see, a blue copy. What you're going to do next is invert this channel. You can press Control i on the PC, or you can go to Image Adjustments Invert. And it'll show you the shortcuts right there. And the, the way that channels works, it actually looks for the lighter areas. Um, you can use this to mask off certain parts of your image, and that's a whole different subject, but this is why we needed to invert it in the first place. So what you do next is you're going to go ahead and click this little round dotted icon at the bottom here. It says Load Channel as Selection. When you click on it, you'll see that all of your images have been surrounded by like a marching ants kind of dotted line. This means that your lines are selected and only your lines. So what you're going to do next is click back on your Layers tab, and you can get to that if it's not available by going to Windows and Layers, or pressing F7, as you see there. And what you're going to have to do is click the New Layer icon at the bottom, and you can always do that. It's, it's a lot faster. You can go up here to Layer, New, and then New Layer. And it'll give you the option to name it and all that there or you can just simply press new layer it makes one for you right above the background here it's just called layer one there's nothing on it you can see these blue checkered squares yours will probably be gray and that just means that there's nothing on this layer it's completely transparent you can think of layers as plastic clear cells like they use in animation so what we're going to do now that the, la the uh, lines here are selected is click your paint bucket tool and which is right here and you can press your, on your keyboard G to select it and if it's not available you might have the gradient tool from messing around with Photoshop earlier what you do is you click and hold the mouse button and that brings out a little flyout menu where you have multiple options for each tool and all of the tools pretty much have this you'll see these little black arrows in the lower right corner of the icon that means that there's more options like every time you click and hold on it it'll bring up a new one so select your paint bucket tool select black from your foreground color you can click here to select it any color you like but we're gonna go with black because that's the color of the ink or you can press D on your keyboard which I'll show you I'll select some other colors and uh, if you have color selected already if you press the D key it will set automatically back to black and white this is what we want so you click anywhere in your picture as long as you have layer 1 selected not the background and you'll see that it's selected because it'll be highlighted here in a darker color Make sure that layer 1 is selected. Click anywhere in your picture. Now it looks like nothing happened. But if you look closely here on your layer 1, you can see kind of that there's the outline right there. So that your image has been painted onto that layer. What you're going to do next is deselect your selection. This is going to get rid of the, the marching ants dotted line here. You can go to select, deselect, or you can press Control D. That makes them go away. Now it looks practically the same but what you're gonna do here is get rid of your background now this is where your original art was on but you don't have to worry about that now because you have the ink on a separate layer and we'll see that in a second so select the background then go to edit and fill or shift F5 and you'll get this little fly out thing here that'll say you contents use and I have it set to white because I've been using only white forever and normally Photoshop has it set to foreground color so you're going to want to set it to white. Press OK. Still looks like nothing happens, but what actually happened is it completely erased everything on the background layer. You can see that it's just white in this little thumbnail here. So we have these little eye icons on every single layer, and that indicates layer visibility, as you can see. 
um, if you click on an eye, it disappears, and so does the visibility of that layer. The layer is still there, you just don't see it. So as you can see, only the background has the eye on it, so only the background is showing up. So if we actually get rid of the background and leave the layer 1 on, you can see that all those blue checkers show up, and that means everything is transparent except for your lines. So you have your lines on a layer by itself, and this is good for doing all kind of effects to it and not disturbing the lines at all. Okay, so we're going to turn the background back on, and what we want to do is, to keep things kind of organized, is I like to name all of my layers. So we're going to double click on the word layer 1 here, and that will allow you to rename it. So we're going to name it to ink. Alright, so we have ink on a layer by itself. Now, we don't want to mess this layer up, so you have these little lock icons here. Each one does something different. What we're going to do is press the black icon that says lock all and you'll see this little icon appear right there now whenever you move your cursor over it you'll see that it changes to a no symbol that means you cannot mess with it any way shape or form you can try to color on it it says could not use the brush you know you cannot do anything to it, it saves you you know trouble of making a mistake and then having to start over